Hi everyone and welcome to your full body workout. Today we are going to be working on your hips, shoulders, and abs, but more specifically the hip muscles that give us stability and decrease risk for injury, your shoulder muscles that get overstretched and overstressed from sitting and or looking at your phone and iPad throughout the day, and lastly, we are working on the abs in all directions, learning how to isolate different muscle groups and also how to brace our abdominals to protect our spine using the McGill Big Three exercises. I use a resistance band for this entire workout to engage more muscles in my hips and core. Just an added little benefit. So if you have one, go ahead and put it on now right above your knees. The first exercise we're gonna be doing in this workout is just a regular straight leg raise. So what you're doing is you're pulling your stomach muscles in tight, pointing your toes up towards your face. We're starting on that right leg, so it's right toes up towards your face, bringing that leg up until it meets your other knee, and then nice, slow, and controlled motion back down. You're keeping your stomach muscles tight so that your back is not moving while you're doing this exercise. You are just moving at the hip. We're doing 15 repetitions on the right side, and then we're gonna be switching over to your left leg. Okay, time to switch to that left leg, toes pointed up, stomach is still tight, nice, slow, and controlled motion. 15 repetitions, and then we're going to be switching back to the right leg to do what's called a VMO, straight leg raise. What that does is it isolates the middle part of your quadricep, more specifically than just a regular straight leg raise. So we're getting ready to switch here, back to the right leg. Leg goes straight out. Now you're gonna turn your whole hip out. Toes are still pointed up. You can see my entire leg is turned out to the side as I'm lifting up. It just helps to isolate a specific part of your quadricep that is well known in helping decrease risk for injury. 15 repetitions on the right side, and then we're gonna switch over to your left leg and do the same thing. Good, last one, and time to switch sides to that left leg. Turn your whole hip out, toes are still pointed up, stomach is still tight, lifting. Nice, slow and controlled movement, 15 repetitions. From here, we're gonna be going onto your side to isolate a muscle in your hip called the gluteus medius. If you've watched my videos before, you know it is my favorite hip muscle, so we're really going to work it today. So we're gonna start by laying on your right side. When you do this, you wanna make sure your back is straight. You saw at the beginning, I bring my leg slightly back and then raise it up to the side. The gluteus medius extends at the hip and brings it out into the side or abduction. You'll feel the muscle a little bit more as you bring it back. So now we're keeping the leg up and we're going into hip extension. For all these exercises in the hips, we're gonna be doing 15 repetitions. So your leg is staying up, now you're kicking straight back into hip extension. 15 repetitions, stomach is nice and tight. You should be feeling this in your bottom. Now we're doing a full swing. You're going into flexion, back into extension, flexion, extension. Nice, smooth, controlled movement. You can see there's still tension on the band. I'm holding that leg up, making sure that that gluteus medius is working the entire time. 15 repetitions each direction here, and then we will be switching into a runner. Okay, time to switch into that runner. So my leg is still up and now I'm making nice smooth circles like I'm running on my side or even like I'm cycling with one leg at a time. Stomach is still tight, that hip should be burning. 15 repetitions and then we're going to go into something called hip circles. Okay, time for those hip circles. Your leg is out straight. We're gonna go counterclockwise first. Nice, smooth, controlled circles. 15 repetitions this way and then we will switch and go clockwise. Time to switch, other direction, clockwise circles. 
15 repetitions. And then from here, we're gonna roll onto your other side and work the right leg. You should actually be feeling the right leg working a little bit as it's stabilizing you against the ground. So both hips should be burning normal and that's how we get those benefits. It also gives us a nice little lift and tone in the bottom. So turn to the other side. I'm putting my thumb right on that gluteus medius where you should feel it as you're lifting. You can see my right leg is slightly extended and then I'm lifting straight up, feeling it right where that thumb is at. Stomach is still tight. So 15 repetitions here and then we're going into that hip extension. Time for hip extension, keeping that hip up and going straight back. 15 repetitions here and the next move will be going forward and back. Time for the next one. Flexion into extension. Nice smooth movement forward and back, keeping that hip up. Tension is still in that band. Bottom should be burning. Excellent, time to switch into those runners or bicycles. Keeping that hip up, 15 repetitions before our hip circles. Okay, going right into our hip circles, legs straight, no rest on this hip exercise. This time on the right leg, we're going clockwise first. 15 repetitions, and then we'll be switching and doing 15 counterclockwise circles. Time to switch those counterclockwise circles. 15 repetitions, and then from here, we're gonna stand up and we're gonna do three exercises that use these hip muscles functionally. We wanna learn how to contract and isolate during these mat exercises, but it's most important to learn how to use them functionally. So the first one we're doing, you're standing on your right leg, you're gonna tap forward to the side and all the way back behind you. Forward, back to the side at about a 45 degree angle, and then back into almost a curtsy lunge. So you're actually mostly working the right leg or the leg that you're standing on with this workout. These three directions are actually used in a well-researched outcome measure called the Y balance test. It looks at ankle mobility, hip mobility, and hip strength and stability. So it's really important for decreasing pain and risk for injury in the hips, knees, and ankle. So it's a really good exercise to do to isolate that gluteus medius muscle in a more functional way. So you should be feeling that hip burn in the same spot as you did down on the mat. Perfect, we did 15 reps all direction. Now we're gonna stand on the left leg, nice and sturdy, thinking about keeping that knee centered right over your foot. Tap forward, back to the side, back behind you. Forward, back to the side, back behind you. This should be a nice, slow and controlled motion. If it's too hard with the band, go ahead and take it off. Or if you feel like you need something for stability, go ahead and put a chair in front of you or put your finger tips on a countertop, something just to make sure that your knee stays stable so you learn how to activate that muscle like it should to keep your entire leg healthy and pain free. So we're gonna do 15 reps just like we did on the other side. And from here, we're gonna go into a jump squat. If you feel like a jump scout squat will be too jarring, you can just do a regular squat. So your feet are gonna be just about hip width. What you're gonna do, you're gonna load your hamstrings, shift your weight forward and pop up. So how you load your hamstrings and your glutes is you just lean your bottom back, then shift your weight forward on your toes and pop up. Just as important as going up is the control on your way down. Try to land with soft knees. So now you can see from the side a little bit more how I'm loading my glutes and hamstrings. I'm bringing my bottom back, then shifting my weight forward to explode off of my toes to use those calf muscles. We're doing 15 repetitions here of the jump squats, and then we're ending with sidestepping. It's just another functional way to use the muscles in the side of your hip. It's not a specific movement we do during sports, but a lot of times when you're shuffling, when you're playing basketball, soccer, you are doing some lateral movements. So it's important to strengthen your hips and have them prepared 
for those movements you do during different sports. This one we're doing 30 side steps total or 15 each direction. You should be in somewhat of an athletic stance. Stomach is pulled in tight and a soft bend in your knees. You can notice my toes are staying pointed straight forward as I step from side to side. Okay, we have successfully completed the hips portion of this workout. Now it is time to move on to our shoulders. We are starting with Superman. So you're gonna get down onto your stomach, arms straight out in front of you. You can notice I kept the band on for this. When you lift your arms, you're actually thinking about leading with the muscles in your low back and shoulder blades. Your fingertips are pointed straight forward. You have a nice strong frame, but you want to use your back to lift you. This helps strengthen those postural muscles that get overstretched and stressed throughout the day when we're sitting at our desks, looking at our phones, our iPads. Our next move is called a prone T-raise. For this move, your arms go straight out to the side, thinking long arms reaching all the way through to your fingertips. And just like in the last one, you wanna think about actually lifting up with your shoulder blades. You're lifting from the shoulder blades, pinching them together, and you have a nice rigid arm that's just following along. You want this movement to start with the shoulder blades. You can see in both these moves, I'm lifting my legs up too. That way I'm getting the added benefit of low back and buttock strengthening. Okay, our next move is called a prone flyaway. So palms are facing down, arms are back down by my side, lifting straight up, still lifting those legs, still thinking about using my back muscles to help lift my arms. You can also notice my gaze is staying straight down. I'm not straining my neck, I'm looking down so that I strengthen those postural muscles that get overstretched looking down throughout the day. These prone exercises are so important to help decrease neck pain and help overall posture when you're standing, walking, doing everything throughout the day. Our next move is going to be prone T circles. So we're making nice little circles, 15 repetitions, your legs stay up the entire time, arms stay up the entire time. We're gonna now do circles in the opposite direction. I'm just showing you a different angle. Arms are staying up, pinching the shoulder blades, thinking nice, long, sturdy arms, smooth circles, 15 repetitions. Again, my gaze is straight down, activating those muscles in my neck. From here, we are going into a push-up. I'm gonna start by showing you on the knees. You can see I have a totally straight body from my knees up to my head. Core is nice and strong, nice slow controlled motion all the way down to the mat, keeping my head straight. If that feels easy, you can come up onto your feet and do a full push-up. This should be really challenging because not only are you doing a push-up, but you should be maintaining a plank position. So totally straight spine, nice slow and controlled motion, abs pulled in tight, gaze straight down. 15 repetitions of all of these as well. Next, we're going into what's called a tricep push-up. How tricep push-ups are different is your, the crease of your elbow should be pointed straight forward and your arms are glued to your side. I'm gonna turn here in just a moment so you can see that forward view. I have to do tricep push-ups on my knees. It's really challenging for me to do them with proper form all the way up onto my feet. Okay, so I'm just showing you that different angle now. So that crease in my elbow, you can see is pointed forward. My elbows are glued into my side so that when I lift up, I'm really isolating and squeezing that tricep. Lower down controlled, squeeze at the top. Nice and slow, squeeze at the top. Perfect. The last two arm exercises we're gonna do are in standing. They are both to help promote good postural strength and awareness. The first one is a row. You can see I'm hinged at my hips. My stomach is tight, my chin is tucked, and just like when down on the mat, I'm thinking about leading with my shoulders. I'm trying to pinch my shoulder blades together, at the same time drive my elbows back at that 90 degree angle. Pulling in and squeezing. 15 repetitions of the rows, and then we're gonna go into external rotation at the shoulders. To choose a weight, you should have a weight where you're not compensating or hiking your shoulders, but it still should be a challenge. Here, I've got my thumbs pointed up, 
rotating out, pinching shoulder blades together. Now I'm showing you a different angle and I'm also doing a different motion at the wrists and shoulders. Now my palms are up. It allows me to open my shoulder blades a little bit more while I pinch them back together. 15 repetitions. Amazing. Shoulders is also completed. The last part of this workout is our core. So the first move is actually a pelvic tilt. But what I'm doing is I'm starting in what's called an anterior tilt all the way forward, then going to neutral spine and all the way back to a posterior pelvic tilt. This is really just teaching you how to isolate different hip movements. So you wanna rock your hips all the way forward here, find middle or neutral spine, then rock all the way back. That posterior pelvic tilt is when people tell you pull your abdominals in so that your back is flat, but I'm trying to teach how to do all different motions at the pelvis, going forward, finding neutral spine, and going back. Neutral spine is the position we want to be in most when we are doing functional activities, when we are lifting in the gym, or doing anything like that. Our next exercise, we're gonna do 15 regular crunches. So with this, just like we did with our prone exercises, you want to lead with your core or the big muscles. So I'm trying to lift here from my stomach. I'm not pulling on my head, leading with my head. I'm thinking about tightening my abdominals and using my abdominal muscles to lift me up versus my neck and head. We're doing 15 repetitions here. And the next three moves are going to be the McGill Big Three exercises. So when we're doing these, we're gonna do start with the curl up. So you're gonna be placing your left hand under your low back to help maintain neutral spine position. Your right leg's gonna go straight out, your right hand on your rib cage so you can feel as you inhale. Then you brace your stomach and then lift your head the same time you lift your right foot, keeping your toes pointed up. You're gonna hold for 10 seconds. So inhale, brace your abs, lift up, and do 10 short, rapid breaths out as you hold. It helps you to engage those core muscles more. So relax down, inhale, brace your abs, lift up. Good. As you breathe, you should feel that abdominal muscle contraction increase. So inhale, brace your abs, lift up, 10 nice, rapid, shallow breaths. Still think about maintaining a nice, rigid leg, toes pointed forward, and when you lift and do that crunch, again, you're not straining your neck, you're lifting from your core and holding. For this exercise, we're gonna do five repetitions on each side, so that was five on the right. Now we're switching to that left leg. Now your right hand goes under your back to help maintain that neutral spine. Left hand can be on your rib cage to help you expand as you breathe and you lift up and hold. So expand the rib cage as you inhale, brace the abs and lift. Hold for 10 seconds as you breathe out 10 repetitions. Doing great, this is our last rep here. This should be challenging. Our next exercise is gonna be coming up into a side plank. We're gonna be going on your right side first. So you're gonna be on your right elbow. And we're also gonna start on your knees just so you get a feel for it. Nice, straight, stacked spine. Lift up and hold for 10 seconds. You're gonna do that pursed lip breathing as you hold and lift here too. Again, just increases the contraction in your stomach as you hold. So 10 breaths or seconds up in that position. We're gonna do three on your knees and then two up all the way onto your feet before switching sides. So here for the last two, straighten out your legs. You're gonna be balancing on that right foot, right elbow, totally straight spine, nice and tight contraction on the side of your abs. Lift up and hold for 10 seconds as you breathe out. Last one on this side, now we're gonna turn over and go onto your left elbow, left knees. 
We're gonna do three repetitions on your knees, two on your feet, just like we did for your right side. Go ahead, straighten out your knees. Now, legs are totally straight as you lift up and hold. Nice controlled. If this feels too challenging, just do all five repetitions on your knees and you can build up to holding on your feet. This is the last rep here and then we're going into bird dog. It's the final of the McGill Big Three and you're gonna start in what's called quadruped or four point position on your hands and knees. So your stomach is pulled in nice and tight. You're reaching out with your left arm, making a fist and reaching your right heel back as far as you can. Now in this one, we're gonna alternate. So now you're reaching your right arm out forward, left leg straight back behind you. You are reaching as far and hard as you can in opposite directions, but you don't have to worry about lifting the arm or the leg too high. It shouldn't be above your spine. You're more thinking pulling in opposite directions with your limbs as your stomach stays tight and braced. Learning how to use that core in a nice controlled motion so that when you do your sports, you do your lifting, whatever it is that you like to do outside of your exercise, your back stays protected because you know how to use your abs or core in the proper way. So with these, we're doing alternating reaching. We're doing a 10 second hold five repetitions on each side. Really think about extending your arm as far forward as you can and that heel as far back as you can. That resistance band gives us a nice little bonus of some extra resistance at our hips. This is our last rep here before we go into the next move called a full plank crunch. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna go up onto your feet into a downward dog position. So bottom pointed up, arms and legs completely straight. Then you rock down into a full plank doing a crunch. So up into down dog, then you're really pulling your abdominal muscles in, hold one, two, three, four, five, and back up. So when you're down in this position, you're doing that breathing that we were doing before. Nice, short, shallow breaths. One, two, three, four, five, and up into down dog. We're doing 10 repetitions of this. Biggest focus, keeping that spine body completely straight as you really pull in the abs and breathe out to brace. This is our last crunch here, and we're gonna be going into our final ab move and final move of the workout. You're gonna go onto your elbows for that elbow plank, and you're going to do rocks. So when you rock, same kind of thing, you're acting like you're doing a crunch, really pulling your stomach in tight, hold just for a beat, and then back. We're doing 10. This is a full body workout. Think about keeping your spine completely straight, tighten your abs as much as you can as you rock forward onto your toes. Go back, rock forward and crunch, and back, rock forward and crunch. This is the last part of your workout. Amazing. <laughs> you can relax. We're gonna end with my very favorite overall exercise for the back to keep your spine nice and healthy called a prone press up. So hands right underneath your shoulders, bottom muscles stay nice and relaxed as you lift up, extending at your low back. Just hold for a beat and back down. Five reps like this, and then sometimes I like to do five repetitions with my knees bent. It just helps me get a little bit of a deeper stretch in my hips and that low part of my spine. Should feel good after this 
work out. Last one here, and then we're gonna be going up into child's pose. So come on back, arms straight out in front of you, bottom resting on your heels. We're gonna reach as far as you can to the right side, feel that stretch on the right side of your body. Good, breathe into it. Now to the left, stretch those arms out and breathe. As you exhale, you should feel extra little stretch. Come on up. Everyone did amazing. This was a full body workout, but more importantly, it's used to keep your body happy and healthy and decrease that risk for injury. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me at jamie at theratrain.org or visit my website theratrain.org for more information and more videos. Thanks for joining me today and I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you.